we tackle one of the most lopsided cases of the day. And this is the idea that fruit is actually worse for you than eating meat. Now, this idea comes from a combination of all the other trials wrapped together in a beautiful salad of just pure misinformation. Okay, you've got people thinking that carbs are bad for you, that they're equal to table sugar, and that they're bad because they spike your blood glucose and they spike your insulin and they're going to make you gain weight. So the answer people come up with is to eat more meat, not to eat more fruit because fruit causes all these issues. And well, if you've been listening, you can see that this is actually not the smartest idea because even though it may seem innocuous, if people are a little overweight or they get to a diabetes diagnosis and they hear that they shouldn't eat sugar or carbs, that's the sort of general philosophy that's communicated online as well as through the allopathic world. So you cut out all fruits and vegetables and then boom, before you know it, you're losing weight and you're losing weight quickly. And you know that's a good thing because it's going to help you reduce your level of insulin resistance. It's going to help you reverse this thing called diabetes, which you just got diagnosed with. But then in that moment, you try and eat a bite of fruit, thinking that you've done everything right. And all of a sudden, your high degree of insulin resistance sends your blood glucose very high and it stops you from losing weight. And because people don't really fully understand exactly what carbs are and they don't quite understand insulin resistance, they think, oh man, thank God I've been eating all this meat and I should avoid fruits even more and stick to good, healthy, grass-fed meat because that's the way to lose weight. But the problem is that when you do that, yes, you're going to lose weight. There's no question about it. But you're going to drastically increase your risk for chronic diseases that are caused by insulin resistance. And it turns out that most of all the chronic diseases in our world today are actually influenced by your degree of insulin resistance. Now, a meta-analysis published in 2013 provides a very comprehensive summary of both large-scale studies on the risk of developing type 2 diabetes from various types of meats. And the results are summarized in the table that you see on the screen right here. If you choose to eat 100 grams of poultry from chicken, duck, goose, or turkey, that can increase the relative risk of diabetes by between 4 and 8%. That doesn't seem like a very large risk, so you might be willing to take it. If you eat 100 grams of all red meat, including things like beef, pork, veal, horse, lamb, sausage, salami, bacon, and ham, then that can increase your risk for the development of type 2 diabetes by between 13 and 17%. So now that becomes a sizable increase in relative risk. The same thing happens if you eat 100 grams of unprocessed red meat that can increase your risk for the development of type 2 diabetes by between 15 and 19%. 50 grams of processed meat, so half as much processed meat, like sausage, salami, bacon, and ham, can increase your risk for the development of type 2 diabetes by between 13 and 57%. Think about that number. 13% seems like a small number. 57% is not a small number by any stretch of the imagination. Okay, And that, again, comes from half as much meat as we did with unprocessed red meat and poultry. And finally, all meat put together, if you consume 100 grams of what is considered total meat, then that can increase your risk for the development of type 2 diabetes by between 12 and 21%. So again, this is definitely worth paying attention to. Okay. Now, the puzzle piece that connects each of these studies that were included in this meta-analysis is very simple that there is a consistent and strong positive association between all meat consumption and type 2 diabetes risk, regardless of the type of meat or the degree of processing. And most importantly, every one of these studies found that a positive association between meat consumption and diabetes risk was present. And that can remove significant doubt about whether the detrimental effects of eating any type of meat, whether red or white or processed or unprocessed, actually exists. Okay? There's another very important consideration to take into account here, which we haven't talked about, which is that processed meats, including salami, bacon, sausages, and hot dogs, to name a few, were given what's called a group one classification by the World Health Organization, which means that there is sufficient scientific evidence that these foods do, in fact, cause cancer. These are, these are not foods that are just maybe associated with the development of cancer and maybe potentially causational. We have plenty of scientific evidence to demonstrate that these foods are carcinogenic without a shadow of a doubt. And then the red meats, including veal, pork, beef, lamb, horse, and goat, were given a 2A classification, which means that they probably cause cancer, but there needs to be a larger body of scientific evidence to actually fully demonstrate that. So in some huge studies like the EPIC study, there is absolutely no contest. The EPIC study is one of the largest investigations ever performed 
to investigate the connection between nutrition and chronic disease. And that involved hundreds of researchers, more than 500,000 participants, and 12 years of data. And what researchers discovered was very straightforward, which is that meat, especially processed meats like bacon and cold cuts and sausage and hot dogs and hamburgers, increases your risk for type 2 diabetes while eating a diet rich in fruits and vegetables reduces your diabetes risk. The EPIC study also revealed that replacing 5% of saturated fat with fructose, whether it's fructose from fruits or yes, refined sources of fructose, reduces your diabetes risk by 30%. And that replacing 5% of protein with fructose reduces your diabetes risk by 28%. So what does that mean? It means that whether you're consuming whole fruits or whether you're getting fructose from refined sources, that's a better alternative than eating meat and actually reduces your diabetes risk, even though the common vernacular is that fructose is bad for you and fruit is equal to sugar, okay? It doesn't add up. Even though mainstream recommendations suggest that eating glucose and fructose from fruits is going to increase your risk for type 2 diabetes, after studying more than a half a million people, EPIC researchers concluded that these monosaccharides, glucose and fructose, actually decrease your risk for type 2 diabetes, especially when they're eaten as substitutes for saturated fat and protein-rich foods. And then you can look at the Adventist health studies, the health professionals follow-up studies, the nurses health study, the women's health study, and guess what? They all say the same thing. So is fruit worse for you than meat? Well, fruits, vegetables, and whole carbohydrates are tied to positive long-term health outcomes, as we have talked about ad nauseum on this channel and in this video. Meat of all kinds, especially red meats and processed red meats, are tied to negative long-term health outcomes, both for the development of cancer as well as for type 2 diabetes. So what's the final verdict? Well, if you include thinking about calorie density or insulin resistance, then fruit is actually significantly better for you than meat because it's lower on the calorie density scale. It's been proven to reverse insulin resistance and can help you lose weight into the future. Any of that into consideration, and you're trying to put yourself into ketosis simply because somebody told you that you're going to get results without having to work out more, then the research suggests that you're likely to increase your chronic disease risk despite the fact that you're going to be able to lose weight rapidly. You can be the judge. To me, the answer is quite clear. Fruit is a better friend to you than meat is, both in the short term and in the long term, and there's no question about that. I know this to be true for myself. I know this to be true for more than 10,000 people that we've helped reverse insulin resistance, and there is no question in my mind that this body of research is extremely robust. I know this without a shadow of a doubt, and I hope that you are also coming to a similar conclusion. This video was just a snippet of a much more in-depth discussion. Click on the link on the screen to check out the full-length episode. Now, the science behind health is overly complicated, unfortunately, but getting healthy doesn't have to be. Visit masteringdiabetes.org start. Answer some questions about yourself and schedule a free consultation to talk with somebody on our team who's going to show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people using the Mastering Diabetes Method. We have a limited number of spots available, and that's why it's imperative to find a good fit. Again, visit masteringdiabetes.org start to schedule a free zero commitment discovery call and start taking control of your health today.